As you gain more experience in the industry, questions related to low-level designs are having quite substantial weight in your interview. Whenever an interview asks you questions like uh, design a parking lot or design something like an elevator system, it should strike to your mind that the interviewer wants to test your object-oriented programming skills and design patterns. So today we will be discussing the question of designing an elevator system. So let's start with an elevator car and this will help us get down on the functional and the system requirement really easily. So the first thing is the a building and we have elevator cars in this. We can have multiple elevator cars. If we have a very hard, tall building or the buildings having very high number of floors or more number of people live in the building. And these elevator cars can be in these different states, right? Either the car can be going down or the elevator car might be going up or the elevator car might be at a stop position, okay? So if I talk about the states, this can be in three states. Either it can go up, either it can go down, or either it can be at a stop position. The next thing what comes, what an elevator car will do, or what an elevator system will help us do. Transfer passengers, right? Transfer passengers from one floor to the other floor. And the next thing is capacity of an elevator, right? So if we are stating about the functional requirement, then definitely we have to talk about what's the capacity or what defines the properties of an elevator. And the first thing can be, what's the maximum weight of passengers the elevator car can carry, okay? So when I am talking, using the word elevator, assume that I am talking about the elevator car. And when I'm talking about the whole system, I'll mention the word elevator system. So when I talk about the elevator cars, when we say, then it should have something like maximum load it can take or the capacity. Second thing, it can be how fast the elevator car can go up or down because that defines how much time a passenger can take from moving from one floor to the other floor. The last one is how many numbers of passenger and elevator car can take, right? Next comes elevator doors, right? And we know that in an elevator, the door will only open when the elevator is at a stop position. So that's also one part of a functional requirement. Okay, the next thing, the elevator buttons, right? So now we, if you see an elevator, there are two kinds of buttons. One's buttons are inside and the buttons are outside. The outside button is generally having only one button or in some cases two buttons with an arrow up or down. And basically it's defined uh, when you press that button, the elevator will stop at that particular floor to pick you up. So there are buttons inside and the outside and the inside buttons are like a panel with numbers, the grid, which shows, help you select to go to the other floors. And there are also buttons which are for emergency uses like call or when the elevator is having some kind of a problem, you press that button for an emergency phone call. What's the next thing in an elevator? A display, right? So inside an elevator, you will see a display. Also outside an elevator, you will see a display to which current floor the elevator is or in which direction the elevator is going. Okay, so these are the basic functional requirements which basically define our elevator car. Next, let's go and see the elevator system. What will help us basically define how many elevator cars will be there used in the building, right? We can easily judge with the number of floors what we have in a building. So we can ask the interviewer, how many floors do we have in the building? You say supposedly 50, then we can say, okay, then maybe we can have like five cars. That should be fine enough to carry passengers out in 50 floor or maybe six. We can discuss and initialize. So here we'll, I'll assume that we are having a building of 50 floor and I'm using six cars or elevator car for carrying the passenger, right? Now the next thing is, you might have also seen some, in some situations the elevators are used or divided zone-wise. So we should ask the interviewer, are in our system what we're trying to design, is it divided zone-wise? Like a certain elevator will stop only in the odd floor number, a certain elevator will stop in the even floor number or maybe some other conditions. So we should ask. Now the next thing is optimizing the elevator usage algorithm, right? How can you optimize the elevator uses such that maybe for an example, a passenger has to wait least amount of time in order to go from one floor to the other floor. So you can optimize it in many different possible ways. One of this possible way is the least time. What's the second possible way? Maybe we can design an algorithm such that the elevator system is able to carry maximum number of passengers at a given instance of time or in a given interval of time. Or maybe 
You might also design an algorithm such that you use the resources in a most optimal way. For an example, like in the morning, there are like in the morning, you have more number of passengers, so you can use all the six elevators of the building. And maybe in the evening, you have very less number of passengers, then you can use like only three of the elevator cars at that instance of time. Then you can save in terms of like electricity or maybe in terms of maintenance cost. So in this way, we can optimize that algorithm, right? So when you are having such an interview, it's very sure that the interviewer will ask you to at least come up with one such algorithm. And during this discussion, I will come and discuss with you at least two of this algorithm so that it can help you during your actual interview. So let's move on. Let's draw a very basic use case diagram, okay? Uh, pretty simple enough just want to show what thing what will be the actors and what will be the use cases so the two very basic actors which will for sure be there is one the passenger and one is the system right and let me draw a box here and then inside this what will be different use cases so one simple use case what has to be done is request for an elevator right so i would say request for elevator and who will do this the passenger will do this then comes opening the elevator door and closing the elevator door or in case of an emergency as well so let's say open close door the passenger can do this also in case of emergency and when the elevator is stopping the system will do this right then comes the which elevator will stop at which location when someone presses a button which is stated outside the elevator in in other words it's basically about the algorithm what algorithm will be there which will decide how the elevators will basically function so i would say algorithm for elevator use and the system will decide this as well and the next one will be the display right and this will be inside the elevator and also outside the elevator and who will take care about this is the system again and the next is the emergency button and the passenger will definitely press the emergency button in case of an emergency so this is our basic use case diagram Next, let's go and start defining our classes. What will be the classes out here? So we'll start with the first designing the smaller classes, and then we'll use the smaller classes to be the composition of the bigger class or that the singleton uh, elevator system class. Okay. So we start with first as the buttons. So for the buttons, we'll use an abstract class buttons because we will have two instances, right? One will be the inside and one will be the outside the buttons they will share some properties but they will look different in terms of the functionalities as well right because there will be multiple buttons when you come to the button sets which are inside and there will be only two buttons which is outside so it's better to have an abstract class button so i would say so we type in button and that's in italic and it can have two functions here or states you can say is pressed and depressed right and who will extend this there will be two classes and one will be inside button and one will be outside right and the inside button will have a panel of a grid basically so i could say 
numbers of maybe array length 10 and here you will have numbers maybe of only two up and down and many other different functions and properties which we can write the next one what will be the uh, elevator car that's an important small component here so let's decide about the elevator car so it say it is car what will be the state of the elevator car we can take it as an enum here because it's fixed right and it is not going to change the elevator can have only three possible states and that's why we will take it as an enum so we'll take it as an enum it will have state stop up or down right and then we can have already stated functions here and the functions will be like uh, move stop right that can be an uh, functions of the elevator car itself and there can be many other functions as well the next smaller class what we can think about is the display so let me draw one more class here for display And what it'll have it can show has something like int floor number then it can show something like int capacity and it can also have something like int direction right and display can have functions like show display good so there will be a building and the building will have different floors and each floor will have doors and depending on the number of doors you can have uh, and the doors when i'm talking about the doors which will be used by the elevator system we'll take one class and say this class basically tells us about the building okay and the building will have floor array and the building will have elevator array because there might be buildings in which you have multiple elevator systems as well, right? A building which is pretty big and there are two systems. That's why I'm taking it as an array. You can have only one instance as well. So I would say in this, there will be floors in the building. So I would make a class for floor. Right. And the floors will have even doors. Maybe a door array is fine. It can have functions like how many doors right okay that should be fine so since we are having a door so let's basically draw the door class as well the door can also have different properties right that's why i'm taking it as a different like the door can be something like it can have its type like emergency door or a service door so we want to keep it separate that's why i'm taking it as a class as well so now we have most of the basic classes what we need the next one what we will have is the bigger class which will be our elevator system so i draw it here nice what the elevator system will have it will have car array of car classes so we'll have a composition out here i'll draw the composition just in a while it will have something for monitoring so it will have displays right then it will have its function like one function which is very important is like show emergency lights In case there is a problem it has to show in each floor that it's an emergency right then there can be one more which is basically about the algorithm and selecting so you can say like select best car and that will define the algorithm what is being used basically to decide on which car will stop at what floor let's draw the composition how these are related so i would say so this has multiple instances of the cars 
So we'll use a diamond here and draw a line from here till here. Right? This will also have multiple instances of the display. So we'll take the display. Right? And the car will also have the display, right? So the car will be composed of display as well with different properties maybe. It will show the number of flows and number of uh, in the direction in which it is going or not or the capacity. Okay, so it might also be a good idea to basically take this display as an abstract class and try to implement different instances here, right, in the car class with a different, a little bit of different functionality and different properties. Let's keep it simple as of now. And then there will be buttons inside the car, so this will be composed of this. This is the composition what we draw. Okay. Next, how will be the floors and the doors? So this will be connected in a very different way. So we will say that the building will compose of an elevator or an ele elevator system, or maybe an array of elevator system, as I discuss. Each building will have floors. Right? It's like a diamond, just less as you. And then there will be doors in each floor. Okay. I think we draw most of it. I'm missing anything. Yeah, maybe there can be something like a monitoring system. So we can have a class for monitoring specifically, which will have emergency brake, weight and electricity and other check functionality. So I can have one more class here, which we can say, monitoring. And then it can have something like bool, brake, bool weight bool electricity usage crossing a limit and then it can basically have some function like check and this will compose this or have an instance of the monitoring class the elevator system Okay, I think we covered almost everything. The next important thing in this elevator system design is to discuss about the different algorithm or possible algorithms in here which we can use for selecting the best car. So I'll discuss that next. And this particular algorithm, these algorithms are also called dispatches. In real life, actually. Okay. Before there were expensive computers available, what was there? These uh, algorithms or the way elevator operation was programmed was using relays. But now we have cheap computers, so we can write as complicated algorithms as we want. When we consider elevator car, elevator car and a passenger together, what's the possible state or the scenarios that can take place? One, the passenger wants to go up and the elevator is going up as well. Second, the passenger wants to go down and the elevator is going up. Third, the passenger wants to go up and the elevator is going down. And fourth, the passenger wants to go down and the elevator is going down. The algorithm what I'm trying to discuss will cover these two scenarios and will be more efficient for the person who is basically in the same direction in which the elevator is going. And he called this algorithm as closest first. And how does it work? Let's take an example. So suppose there is a building. It has some flows. Two, three, four, five. Yeah. 
And there are passengers out here. So a passenger at floor zero, floor one, floor three, and maybe at floor four. Okay, and there is an elevator car currently at floor zero. Now, this passenger wants to go in a different direction. This passenger wants to go up. This passenger wants to go down. This passenger also wants to go down. And this passenger also wants to go down. So what this elevator will do, it will pick the person who is closest to the elevator. So the first step will be pick the passenger closest to current position. So we can take care of this by having two min heaps. And let me write these are min heaps. And this main heap will be taking care of people who wants to go up and this main heap will take care of the people who wants to go down okay and then these main heaps will be filled as per the distance of the bus passenger from the current location of the elevator so now at the stage zero what will be the main heaps suppose uh, min heap values will be so I say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there are six flows. So what happens? Elevate the person who wants to go up. So a person at zero location at a distance of zero wants to go up. Then there is no more person who wants to go up. Then a person who wants to go down. So a person is at floor 2 and is at a distance of 2. Then a person is at floor 4 and is at a distance of one, two, three, four. And there is a person at floor five and is as a distance of five. Okay. So the operation will start and the elevator will pick this person because he's closest to it. So the person goes in. And as soon as the person goes in, the min heap, this particular value is now being removed. Okay. And this person, suppose he wants to go to the floor three. So he wanted to go to floor three. So the lift moves up and this person is dropped at floor 3. This person is dropped at floor 3. And now again the state of these mean heap is updated at the current location. So now these two min heaps will look something like this. This will be empty. The min heap which basically corresponds to upward direction. And this mean heap will get updated. So there is a person at floor 2 at a distance of 0. There is a person at floor 4 at a distance of 2 and there is a person at floor 5 at a distance of 3. So it will pick the person at floor 4, floor 2. Now one thing I forgot to tell you that the direction of operation of the elevator is decided by the first person who gets in and presses the button. So as soon as in this case the person as floor 0 came in and pressed the button to go up, the elevator direction is decided to go up. Now, when the passenger at floor 2 will come in because he's at a distance of 0, he comes in and when he presses the button to go down, the elevator will start going in a downward direction. Okay, so what will happen? This will be deleted from the main heap and then the there will be a third state and this will again be empty and this will be updated to the passenger at floor four at a distance of maybe this passenger suppose it wants to go to the floor one okay so you will come to the floor one let me delete this now so he'll come to the floor one and so this meeting will be updated so one two three this the other person passenger at the floor four it is, is at a distance of one two three and the passenger at floor five is at a distance of four okay so next thing what we'll do, it will pick the passenger at floor four and then start moving down. Okay, and it keeps on continuing. But in the same case, suppose it, when it was taking the passenger who was at floor four and, and that instance again, 
one new passenger came in at floor two. Then this slip, what it will basically, when it's going down, it keeps on checking the min heat, which is basically taking care in the direction of its travel. Okay. And it finds a passenger at another floor, which is closest in the main heap because this main heap will be updated as soon as this passage, this lift keeps on moving. When the lift comes here, at this time, the main heap will be updated. This main heap will be updated with a passenger at floor two is at a distance of zero, right? And the passenger at floor four is at a distance of two and a passenger at floor five is a distance of three. Then it will stop and pick this passenger as well because it is going in the same direction. And then it goes in the same direction and then maybe suppose this passenger wanted to go to floor one and he also wanted to go to floor one. Then the lift elevator will come here and drop both of these passengers. That's how it will operate. Now there are cons for this operations, right? This particular algorithm. What the passenger at floor five has to wait such a long time. It could have easily basically done when it was at floor four, it could have picked the passenger at floor five and floor four both and then move down. That could be one optimization that could have been done here. But this particular closest first algorithm, what the, I'm explaining here, does not do that. So when you are being interviewed, you can talk and discuss about that, that this is kind of an optimization what we can do so that we can try to optimize the time that a particular passenger has to wait for the lift. Okay, there can be multiple algorithms, one different algorithms for having lift operations and you can come with different operations. And one such I would say is like we can maintain two arrays and we can mark the two arrays as true and false depending on the position at which a person has pressed the button. And when the lift is going up and down, it checks both the arrays and picks the passenger wherever it is true in the direction of its travel. Right, that can also be an operation. So suppose a lift is going up, then it will pick or it will still go up till the top floor and pick all the passenger who comes or whose values are being true at that particular point. And when it's going down, it will pick all the passengers whose values are true in that particular area. That also one that is also one algorithm which you can come up with. OK, that's nice. So let's uh, have a look at an animation about the same algorithm, which is close as first and how it basically can work in real life. Okay, so at time zero, this is the situation of the elevator system. So we have passenger at floor one, floor three, floor four, and floor six. Okay, and there are two main heaps, and this is the state of the main heap. So there is a passenger who wants to go down, is at a floor three, and is a distance of two from the current position of the elevator. And then there is a pers person at floor one who is at a distance of zero, and so are the other passenger. So what it will do, it will first pick the passenger at floor one, right? So it picks the passenger at floor one and suppose this passenger wants to go to floor three. So it will go up and drop the passenger at floor three. So the passenger at floor three goes. Now the mean heaps are updated. So there are passengers at floor three for a distance of zero. And then there are passenger at floor six for a distance of three and passenger at floor four who are at a distance of one, right? So it will pick the passenger who is closest. So you'll pick the passenger three. They want to go to floor two and the direction is down. So the direction of the elevator operation will now change and it will move to floor two. Now it will drop both the passenger at floor two. And then again, the state of the main heap will change. Now it will go and pick the passenger at floor floor who wants to go to floor six and then it will drop the passenger at floor six. Now, after dropping the passenger at floor six, then the person who was at floor six was the only person available in the main heap as well will be picked and he wants to go to floor three so he'll be picked up and he'll be dropped at floor three this is how it will operate but if you see that the person who was at the floor six had to wait quite a long time and it would have been optimized by designing an algorithm or optimizing the algorithm in a different way so this was just an example of an algorithm which you can come up during an interview just think a bit more and maybe design your own algorithm uh, for operating these elevators or for designing this dispatcher system. Thank you so much, guys. I hope uh, this particular video helped you. And if it did help you, please do like and subscribe because it then motivates you to basically make more videos. Thank you. Bye bye.